Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, I'm going to give you an introduction to the width and height properties in CSS. All right, let's begin, everybody. We will begin by creating two div elements, and each div element will have a class of box. Within our first box, let's create an H2 header with the text of this is number one. And we'll create a paragraph underneath. To generate some text in VS Code, you can type lorem, then hit tab. All right, let's copy our div. Paste it, change number one to number two, and that's where we're at. So within our style sheet, we can set a height and a width for an element, an ID, or a class. So let's take our box class, dot box. I'll add a border. Border two pixel solid, just so that it's easier to see. Here we are. Okay, normally with the height, by default, it's auto. We don't need to explicitly state that. You can see that there's no apparent change when I reload the page. So the height is going to be calculated automatically when we render our web page. But you can set an explicit height. For example, 100 pixels. That's a little too small. Our content is kind of overlapping. Let's change that to 200. Now it's a little too big, but it is possible to set a fixed height. So let's set height back to auto. Now we will change the width. So with the width, we can set a number of pixels, for example, 100. We would have two very long skinny columns, and they're right on top of each other. That's because divs are block level elements. We'll reserve this entire space for each of these div elements because they're block level. So let's change the width to 200 and see what happens. Now they're more of a box shape. If I set width to be auto, the width will be calculated automatically. And like I said, that's the default. These block level elements want to take up as much width as possible, kind of like your mom. If I changed width to be 50%, the width of this element will take up 50% the width of our viewport, but we're still allocating all the space for each development because they're block level. If I were to use the float property, let's float to the left. The reason that these elements aren't floating, there's still not enough space to place box two next to box one because we have our border. Our border takes up two pixels. If I were to remove the border, they should display back to back, which they do. You do have to take in the width of the border when calculating the width. The same thing applies with padding. Let's apply a little bit of padding. Padding 25 pixels. Now we have 25 pixels worth of padding between our content and the border. I mean, it looks nice, right? When calculating the height or the width, we can disregard any padding or any borders, but we have to add this property. We'll add box dash sizing border dash box. When we calculate the height or the width we're allocating, disregard any padding or any borders. The box sizing property will take that into consideration. We can now fit these elements right next to each other. The width of each box is 50% and they both have borders and padding. What you also might see with box sizing is that what some people like to do, they'll use an asterisk as a selector. That means all elements. And then they'll apply the box sizing property to all elements. Because, well, it can be kind of annoying to calculate width and heights while factoring in padding and borders as well. All right, now if we were to float right, box one is on the right, box two is on the left. Let's undo that. You can set a minimum height and a minimum width as well. So with our two boxes, let's get rid of our paragraphs. I'm going to text align center just to center our text. This is number one. This is number two. If I were to set the max width to, let's say, 25%, even though we stated the width should be 50%, the max width is going to cap that out at 25%. You can see that the sizes of these boxes have shrunk. Or maybe if I set a minimum width of 75%, we're saying that each of these boxes should be at least 75%, even though before we declared them to be 50%. You also have max height and min height. There's really going to be no change between the two. Since the height of our web page starts at the top here and ends right here, we're not using all the space down below. So what I propose is that let's place our boxes within a container. We'll create another div 
with a class of container to contain our boxes. Let's take our two boxes and place them within this div element. So with my container, the container class, with our container, let's change the background color to something gray, just so it's easier to see. We can't see our container because our boxes are taking up all the space. With our container, if we need to take up the entire height of our web browser, we can set the height to be 100 VH, meaning viewport height. So now our container is taking up 100% of the height available. If I were to zoom out, the container is still taking up all that space. So with our boxes, let's change the background color because I can't really see them that well anymore. For the background, let's change that to be white. I'm going to zoom out to 100%. With my minimum height property, I will set the minimum height of our boxes to be 50%. Now they take up 50% of the space available, which is 100% our viewport height. If I were to change the minimum height to be 100%, we take up the entire space available. Or I could set the max height to be 50%. Even though we set max height to be 50%, we don't necessarily need all this space because there's not enough content. If I absolutely need these boxes to take up at least 50% of the height of my window, I would use minimum height instead of maximum height. So really, it's up to you. All right, everybody, so that is an introduction to the height and width properties in CSS.